Put your fresh and that kind of thing. So what we've got now, before lunch, uh, which looks delicious, by the way, um, we've got about sort of a half hour or so with the guys from Europac who are going to show us um, 3D scanning and how that works. It's a few practical demonstrations, I suspect. So we'll hand over to those guys. Yeah, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the thing we've heard from Mike is it was about manufacturing, but we've got to make manufacturing fun as well as anything else. So um, what we'll try to show you today is how you actually capture data and where that data may take you, wherever it is in life. So rather than uh, 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 continue with a PowerPoint demonstration, we'll do an actual demonstration. And I think, like all good magicians on television, they always have a beautiful assistant standing there with the magic wand and so forth. And it's unfortunately, <laughs> I haven't found one, but I'm just wondering whether I could ask Nicola, this lady from the council, maybe to give me a hand in it, because I haven't got a beautiful assistant to... to you can't give her a round of applause. <laughs> so I have now got my beautiful assistant. <laughs> all we need to do is you sit on the chair. Now, you can see this isn't one I prepared earlier, is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we are going to have a bit of fun. The whole idea of, of data capture is it's in any environmental situation you can think of. We from Europac get involved with every type of thing. For example, we do all the prototype cars for Aston Martin. We do all the Lotus cars. We do all the rally cars. We do the F1 teams. We do aerospace. We do wing parts. We do jewellery all on from a, a commercial company. But the thing about the whole exercise today and what the Lincolnshire County Council are trying to achieve is to open your mind up to 3D technology. If you think about it, you can actually probably achieve it. So we're going to do something very live with a young lady that doesn't know what's going to happen to it. <laughs> so all I'll ask you to do is maybe concentrate on um, that young man at the top left-hand side who helped you organise this. You can look at him and not smile for two seconds. That's it. Just sit as still as you can. And just look at him, no matter what happens to you. <laughs> it no, it is. is a flashing light. So, so if you just, if you just keep, just concentrate on him as Andy goes around. is real-time data capture. So um, this can be my beautiful assistant, who will now be processed. We forgot to tell you about it. Didn't we? That's a probably more painful side than the actual side. But the whole idea, what's happening uh, in reality is we're actually projecting a white frame, like a piece of white paper. And on that white paper um, is 500,000 points every time that little device flashes. So 500 little tiny points are going around the contour of the, the, the object we're trying to capture. Here you see we're actually just tidying up the data now. Because <clears throat> those 500,000 points, every time we go around the object, we're distorting those little tiny points, which gives me the 3D image that we're, we're trying to capture. There you go. And you can put this little lead in colour. And if we had the 3D printer, we could print her. <laughs> and she could take her home to her husband and think, crikey, I've got two of them now. <laughs> it would be useful for meetings, actually. Well, <laughs> we thought she was absent, but she just quiet. <laughs> can I? Yeah, I'm going to go again. That's OK. Do you want to watch the screen? Can you watch it yourself? There you go. Any risk for people with epilepsy in their life? Yes, that, that, it's, it's the same with any, any flashback photography. Um, <laughs> we, 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 do have, we do have other lasers that don't have that effect. But in, in, in this particular instance, it's a, it's a, it's a low-cost handheld device, um, which well, obviously we, we, we're capturing people today, but really it goes across all industries, all types of applications, which we can show you samples on in a moment. 
but we thought we'd have some fun, show you how it actually ca carries the, the technology through. What do you mean by low cost in your world? Well, medium cost is £140,000, yeah. <laughs> high cost is half a million, the low cost is 13. Right. Okay. So, I mean, I have a, a, I have a customer who, um, she, I mean, she'd married her children at school, decided that she wanted to get back into fashion industry and do things that she hadn't touched for 10 years, persuaded her husband that, that she ought to have a, a bit of money from the bank. And she set herself up in her front room. She's now looking at scanning uh, one of her colleagues because when you capture this data, you're actually capturing, capturing de uh, real X, Y, Z, 3D data. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you want to make a dress or a perfect pair of jeans, you've got the perfect model to be able to make that. So you can stand, stand the material, make the tucks and, 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 and bits and pieces. Thank you. <laughs> but yes, in, in reality, um, she, she persuaded her husband, and now this is she's taking her friends, she decides whether she can get back into fashion. She also went to art school, and of course, uh, she's thinking about my, my, <clears throat> now doing uh, digital sculptures, because from this uh, outline uh, uh, here, we could actually change that, we could modify it. There are softwares out there which you can paint and sculpture with on your computer. And having done all that, you can then 3D print it. Or, uh, just for example, we did a job the other day for Johnny Walker, the, the whiskey guy. They were sponsoring some, um, some sports device in, in Australia, forgotten to ship the big model of the guy. We happened to scan it in Manchester, sent the file to Australia, cut it into four sections, and because he was very big, we didn't print it, but it went on a milling machine. He made it out of wood, hand-painted it, and was ready for the show. So, again, whatever you think of 3D scanning, there's an opportunity to, to work with it. This is the type of thing that we do. Um, Nicola was kind enough to step down. I, I had surprised her. She, she didn't know I was, uh, I was uh, doing it. But it literally, within a matter of seconds, you can get a full D image. If we spent more time, we could do the same. If we asked her to stand, and put it on a little tape, turntable that you would get from a, from a fashion shop. I could capture the whole body in about two minutes. We could model her up completely. And in fact, some of our clients are doing that now, taking this type of technology for their own little businesses. They have a dream, they have an idea, and they want to bring it to, to the fore. And by using this technology, it's handheld. We have a lot of professional people. That little device goes in the camera case. You can fly with it anywhere in the world. You can go down to Saudi Arabia if there's a broken piece down there uh, of architecture that they want to capture in the desert. They, they don't want to disturb it. You can scan it, send it back by high-speed broadband if you want. <laughs> so the whole idea of capturing 3D technology is it is instantaneous, it is accurate, it is not a picture. And maybe if we can rotate that around. It's not a picture, it is a 3D model. So it has depth. It has it has depth. It has substance all the way along. So if this was a, if I was reverse engineering a car, it would be a 3D model of the car. You could actually manufacture from it. So whereas it might look like a picture on the screen, it is a 3D model which can be used into any computer software. You can print it into 3D. You can mill with it. You can you can do what you want with it. So some of the examples that that we've used this on is the medical profession. We can, um, uh, a, a transplant surgeon in, in the teaching hospital in Edinburgh asked if we could do live body parts, like liver transplants, kidneys, etc. We said, probably, but how many people would lend me their kidneys while they had a go? He said, no, that's probably true. So go down to the butchers, get a piece of uh, a pig's liver, and scan it and cut it for it, which we actually did. So we can actually scan body organs. He wanted to know the, the texture of it to see if it was diseased. He wanted to, for us to calculate the volume of it because the volume, everybody's kidney is a different size, so I learned a few weeks ago. So from that, we volumized it. And then what he wanted to do is catch this, get a database of it, because if he sent it to a colleague in London, and he had one in Edinburgh, he would send it down there, they'd open it up, they'd guess the size of it. As soon as they opened it up, open the chat, ah, oh, it's too big, it won't go in. He didn't get his transplant. The, the, the organ was destroyed, so everybody fell apart. 
So now we prove the concept that I could scan that, that liver and he would give me about a maximum of four minutes in a sterile environment. It takes us to a minute to scan it, a minute to process it. So I could scan it, process it, look at the texture. As, as we've seen here, the colour texture, I could see if it was diseased. I could then work out the volume. He could then work out whether it was acceptable for the transplant in London before sending it. And at the same time, you know, rescue that, that, that uh, particular organ and could be used on somebody else who was a good recipient. So that's one end of the, uh, of the spectrum. We can use it for prosthetics. We can use it for car, car crash victims that want facial transplants. We can do it for any type of object you can think of, sports shoes, body parts. Um, I'm working with Gillette for the gentleman that want a really clean shave about it. watch how many different faces we are. We're working currently with the military because, uh, because of the, the war conditions that we are. We find ourselves in Afghanistan. They want better bulletproof vests. And so we are uh, currently looking at scanning the, the actual chest of people because the thickness of the material is absolutely crucial to the impact velocity of the, the arms. And although they could get the material probably quite right, but where it fits on the body wouldn't be right. So by taking you know, a few hundred people which we can scan in a day, we can then get a better idea of the average chest fit, we can make sure that the bulletproof vest will be in a situation, and things like that we find ourselves in. So just to... Um, pop back to the big screen. So from that, um, <laughs> as I say, you can take it into any industry. Well, this was another example. We talked about body parts. I've talked to you about engineering, F1 and, and RC Martin. But our heritage can, can come into play. Now, this is the tomb of the Duke of, Duke of Norfolk. And unless you're a historian, it was actually the illegitimate son of Henry VIII. Now this is his tomb, and it's in a, in a little tiny church in, um, in Norfolk. And um, we were asked to go and scan this tomb, and actually there were three in, in the series. And you can see the detail that we captured on the large projector. But they, what they wanted to do was, A, to capture it, to see if it was possible to be done, which we did. But the historians believe that this was not the church that it was originally in, and they felt it had been moved from a previous church and that somebody had dotted it or broken it or changed it or stolen things from it. So we, we went on site and, and we captured for the BBC so the whole thing, you can look at the detail of, of him and his wife who followed him through. But what they also thought that could we capture it and, and really make a 3D model of it, virtual model on the screen. Why? Because the historians had found in the dungeon, if you like, of another church about five miles away, pieces that they believe came from the original tomb. Now, they couldn't go along and chip off the new tomb, which was still already 1,200 years old, chip it off and put the other part up to see if it fit. But what we can do, by catching like this 3D model, and we did actually print a model, a, a, a scaled-down model so people could get a feel for it, so this, this thing was about two and a half metres by a metre by another metre and a half. And uh, we, we, we made a, a, a printed model so people could get a feel for where all the pieces fit. But part of the second phase of this exercise is now to take all these small pieces that they found and we will scan those individual, individual pieces and then we will virtually cut the pieces off this finished tomb to the ones that they think it was originally, and we'll put the jigsaw together on the computer. So now we've got, if you like, historical forensics on whether this tomb was destroyed uh, or, um, or interfered with in a move that was lost in the, in the past of time. So the BBC is continuing this as a, as a second phase programme. We're on to scanning all the other individual parts now, and we'll put the jigsaw together and then the architects and the historian will come together to see whether this was really true. So just another wide example of, of what you can use it for. And just more examples of the two itself. Now you can then extend it to, to the, uh, the fairy world. So if you're into gremlins and that type of thing, 
Um, you'll find that people like art artists will create something uh, similar to, to this picture here. That could be crafted by a very clever artist, and he wants to make replicas for the garden or for the children's uh, 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 um, grottoes, etc. So you can you can actually work at a situation like this that we can scan an object pre-made and, and make uh, replicas of it for, for different works. We can actually just take the design and print it and cast parts from it, or any other type of, of, of combination you can think of. We can now extend that to the film world, because film studios work with a lot of props which then get scanned into or made into computer software of which you see in the film. So this is something which has already gone now, which we couldn't show you a few months ago. This is from the X-Man, this is his hand. So we scanned all the objects from the X-Man, brought them back into, back into computer technology, and then you get the virtual films that you see everywhere today actually started off as physical items which have been scanned and brought back into the computer industry. It's the same as his leg to tribute to. So you can see the detail to which we can actually capture this type of, of, of object. But okay, this is for the film industry. But if this really was for prosthetics, people coming back from Afghanistan needing, needing replacement legs, etc., we can actually make very, very close copies. So although these are human body parts for a film and animation, we can extend this to the real world of car accidents, prosthetics, people who have to have surgery or whatever the case may be. So film industry continues. So uh, yeah, I think you definitely had a good night out on Friday. And uh, so again, we've looked at body parts. These can be masks, these can be chains. They'll animate that into a voiceover and so forth. In, in making the film. But this was a sculptured model of how the, the designer or the director said that's what the image should look like. This was made in clay, we captured it, then you can make it talk and fly and do whatever you want to do. Moving on, there was a young lady who came to my office, she said, I, I want to try and capture my daughter for her wedding, but I don't want to just have a photograph, I actually want to make a model of her for her life. And we said, okay, we'll have a look at it. We'll it be the dress, being very uh, detailed in its design with lots of folds and so forth. We weren't quite sure what it would work. But literally, she brought her daughter to the office. We scanned her completely. Uh, um, she went out for a cup of coffee. We scanned the husband to be, so we weren't allowed to see each other, were they? Okay. Very naughty. But this is the type of thing you can do. So that this lady decided she wanted to do it. If it was successful, I think she's going to try and make it a little business for herself, doing this type of thing. So not only would she have a 3D image that she could put on the web, she could actually go along to printing people, print little models of them, print full-size models of them, have them milled, you name it. Again, another application of 3D capture. It doesn't happen to be in the human world. This uh, farmer, <laughs> who had a very, very prized bull, so I'm not going any further in case I get myself into trouble, but he tried a magnificent range of uh, little bulls and cows. But he was so proud.